G'day, welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Now, a lot of people have been emailing me, asking me, what's the guts with the new FreeSky ACCST update? Uh, they've been saying there's a bug in the protocol that's used in the FreeSky uh, pre-access RF systems and that people need to update because otherwise they could encounter uh, uncommanded servo movement. So what's this all about? Do you need to do it? What's the cause? What's the problem? And, you know, basically, is it worth your while? Well, I've got to say that the facts are pretty thin on the ground. I've followed a few forum postings and a few bits and pieces, and it appears that in the EU, where they use a different version of the software, in the EU, there have been some issues with, um, I don't know if it's uncommanded, some people say it's, it's a latency, some people say it's an uncommanded servo movement, and this fix, they've been asking FreeSky to make it, and FreeSky made the fix and they've rolled it out. So you might think on the face that, well, hey, you know, I'll just upgrade my radio gear so that I'm not going to experience this particular bug. But there, there are other aspects to this whole situation you should be aware of. Firstly, I've been flying FreeSky with the ACCST system for, well, since 2000 and something. I forget what it is. Let's have a look. I've got a, I've got a transmitter here. I can tell you since when. Because Welcome this is the original Tyrannus I got from FreeSky many, many years ago. Let's... Uh, Oops, let's see where the, um, let's go to the menu, um, and let's go to page, page. Let's see what this firmware on this is. I've never updated the firmware. 2013 this firmware came out, and I've never updated it. It's version 1.0.00. And why haven't I updated it? Because it works. And one of my philosophies in life is, if it works, don't fix it. So this was 2013, and I'd been using the modules, the, the replacement modules for JR transmitters and Futawa transmitters and the receivers for well over a year before that. So we're looking at 2012, so you're looking at, I don't know, getting on for 10 years overall, not quite 10 years, I've been using the ACCST system, and I can honestly say, hand on heart, I have never encountered the bug that this supposedly fixes. Now, some of the forums say it doesn't happen on the D8 series of receivers. It only happens on the D16. So if you like me and you use a lot of the old D8 protocol stuff uh, rather than the newer D16 protocol stuff, then don't upgrade. If you don't, if you don't need it, don't do it. Um, if you are running a lot of X series or D16 receivers, then you'll have to decide, have you had any of these uncommanded servo movements? I don't know. I haven't heard of people complaining about it until this, until FreeSky actually published this uh, this new software version, I hadn't heard of anyone complaining to me about some problems with the FreeSky system. So, and when you think about it, for many, many years, a lot of people have been running, especially in mini quads, the X series receivers, the XM Plus, the XM, the XS4R or XSR with whatever, or S4B or whatever. So many X series receivers that people have been running in mini quads. And you would think with all the hours people are racking up on mini quads, and with the the obvious effects of any kind of uncommanded servo movement or channel movement, people would have been complaining about it, but they haven't. So I tend to think that this, this maybe this is a legitimate bug. Maybe it only affects the EU version of the software. And that's what I'm thinking. It looks like it only affects the EU version. So if you're running the FCC version, I, I don't think I would upgrade the software. And if you're flying foamies, let's face it, if you're flying a foamy and you have a momentary glitch on your elevator, your rudder, your aileron, it's unlikely to kill anybody, it's unlikely to be the end of the world, you maybe you won't even notice it. So unless you're flying really high performance models, like you know jets or, or really, really fast, uh, maybe um, gliders or large models with large gas engines, <laughs> really seriously, I would think if it's working, do not fix it. So why? Would you not want to fix it? Well, as you know, a while ago, FreeSky rolled out a new system called Access. It's a new protocol. And they said to everyone, oh, this gives you a more reliable link and it, it's better range and the telemetry works better. When in fact, Access was not for the benefit of the consumer. Access was for the benefit of FreeSky. There's been a lot of third party receivers and now there's third party transmitters coming out which are compatible with the FreeSky ACC ST protocol. And that's costing FreeSky money. For example, in this model here, this is the, the uh, Zod Nano Talent Evo, which uh, um, a follow-up review on this is due very shortly. Yes, no, was it um, right, earlier this week? I flew this to the limits of visual line of sight, which was almost 2.5 kilometers, nearly 2.5 kilometers. The receiver in here is one I reviewed recently, which is the Motive RC. That's the one there. There's a review on this channel for this receiver. And during the flight out to 2.5 kilometers, I didn't get a single RSSI warning. As I turned the model to come back, I got a few warnings because the orientation of the antennas was changing. That was to be expected. But it was rock solid all the way. 
and I wasn't using my Tyrannus, I was using my Jumper T16. So using two FreeSky compatible products, I got perfect performance, amazing results. To, be, to tell you what happens, if I use one of these uh, X-Series receivers, I start getting RSSI warnings in the same model, because I've used them in this model, the same model, at about the 1.7, 1.8 kilometer mark, I start getting low RSSI. With this receiver, I didn't get a low RSSI until I was out at 2.5K and turned around to come back. So it's maybe it was just the conditions on the day, but it shows that this stuff is as good, if not better, than the original FreeSky. And that's hurting FreeSky because they are encountering this competition and their, their response seems to be, well, we won't make our products better. We'll just make them proprietary and we'll lock people in and we'll encrypt things so that these other companies can't, can no longer make compatible products. That's not the way to do it if you're in business and you want to be in business for the long term. The best response FreeSky could have made was to say, okay, these, these things are pretty good. That T16 is a pretty good radio and these receivers, they work pretty well. Maybe we should make ours work even better than they do so that people have got a reason to keep buying our product. That's what I would have done if I was in charge of FreeSky. That's the attitude I would take. It's the attitude that I think most businesses would take. But no, FreeSky has grown. It's like most companies, they reach a stage where they think, we don't have to worry so much about the customer anymore. We own the customer. The customer will just take whatever we give them because we are FreeSky. We are the big RC company. And when you start reading your own publicity like that, eh, you're headed for a fall. So um, that's what makes me think maybe the, the importance of this tiny little bug that may produce uncommanded servo movement in the EU under special, you know, very, very unusual circumstances, that may be um, the, used now to try and scare people into updating all their software. And the res a reason you don't want to update all your software is once you switch to the new version of the ACCSD protocol on your transmitter, you have to update all your receivers or they won't work. And actually, I'm not going to go into that because if you go, I'll put a link in the description of this video to uh, Prince Pavel's channel. That's Pavel, and I can't say his last name because I'll murder it, um, which I mentioned in a video just a little while ago. He did a very good video on this whole thing. He explains what works, what doesn't work, what's compatible, what's not compatible if you go to the new update. So go and have a look at his video. I've linked to it. Go there. And while you're there, subscribe. It's a great channel. It has some really good content. So do that, and you'll see what I'm talking about. But I'd say I'm not going to upgrade because for a number of reasons. Firstly, I'm flying foamies, and I don't care if I get a momentary glitch on my elevator. It's not gonna, it's not gonna really kill anybody or cause any problems. Also, I've never had those glitches. I'm not flying the EU version of the software. I'm flying the, the standard FCC version. And from what I can gather, as I said, it looks like this is only really affecting the EU version because the EU version of the D16, and it's only D16 because I don't think D8 can be used in the EU anymore. So it's really down to the D16 software, and. D16 in the EU is kind of strange. The Europeans, they're a bit crazy because whereas our transmitters just blast away and send the stuff out, send out our signal, um, regardless of what else is going on, because with spread spectrum you can do that, in the EU, the transmitter has to listen first to make sure there's no other signals on the band before it transmits. The concept being that, well, you don't want to interfere with other users. But the reality is, the actual reality is that with spread spectrum, you can afford to clobber other signals occasionally. It's because you can, spread spectrum can pick out the signal from the noise, so it's not going to hurt if you accidentally stomp on some other signal. The worst that'll happen is that a packet gets lost and it gets resent. It's not the end of the world. But if you've got a transmitter that has to listen first, as the FreeSky protocol does in Europe, then if the channel is busy, there may not be any available time to send your particular signal to the receiver. So you can end up with very long latency times. You know, if you're sitting there and your transmitter is listening for a whole second and, it's, and the, the airwaves are, are clogged at that time, then you're not going to be controlling your receiver for a long time. And you, it could appear to act like a glitch. A lot of things could happen. So the EU, oh, they're just really strange. Um, just run the FCC version of the software and you're good to go, I think. Well, that's it. People asked, I've told you what I think. Now, it's just, as I say, mainly it's opinion. I've told you the facts that I know. I've told you what I'm unsure of, and I've told you my opinion. So you can make your own choices. If you do upgrade to the new ACCSD system, you can forget, at least for the time being, about using a multi-protocol module like the jumper uses. So you'll, you'll only be able to use a free sky transmitter. And well, maybe that is not important to you. So if you're just totally a free sky shop and you don't think you'll ever want to run third-party receivers and save yourself a bit of money, then go for it. If you think you want that extra little bit of protection, go for it. If you're like me and money, money is very important to you and you can't afford to go, you know, you want to take advantage of the, the cheaper options and in some cases like the, the 
jump other much cheaper options, then don't go for it. So there you go. Hope that's been of value to you. Put your comments in the comedy place. I'm sure some people will chime in and say, oh no, you've got to have this, otherwise you'll kill people. Yeah, that's an opinion too. But that's it from me. And I, you know, if you've got questions or anything to ask me, you can always, you know, put them in the uh, in the comments on this video and I'll try and answer them in a future one. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Bye for now.